we can now look deeper, farther and more cleanly into the universe than ever before. A place where stars are born, a nebula around a dying star, a collection of galaxies that interact closely, and the first spectrum of an exoplanet's light. Finally, on what seemed to the astronomy community like Christmas Day, NASA released one of the most highly anticipated first ever images taken by the recently launched James Webb Space Telescope, and we'll be going through the results in today's video. The James Webb Space Telescope is on a quest to watch a number of the faintest, earliest objects in the cosmos from a vantage point almost 1 million miles, 1.5 million kilometers, from where you are sitting now. On December 25, 2021 at 7.20 a.m. ET from the Guyana Space Center in French Guyana, the JWST was launched, and with it, we are going to witness the universe in a way that we've never seen before, gaining a fresh perspective on the cosmos. A big blue star lit up the early cosmos some 13 billion years ago. That light has blazed through numerous light years of the growing universe, turning to shade whenever it meets dust and rock. The expansion of space itself bent and warped what little was left of those old photons as it avoided the gravitational wells of intervening stars and galaxies, stretching and twisting what little was left of them. Finally, earlier this year, a portion of this light was focused through the mirror of an observatory orbiting a tiny, waterlogged planet, providing us with a glimpse of a star that is really old. The pictures that Hubble gave were absolutely impressive. However, astronomers who observed it believed it was unique enough to deserve a deeper study using a different telescope. This is where the JWST comes into play. Webb's name was initially assigned to what was formerly known as the Next Generation Space Telescope in 2002, about 20 years ago. It was supposed to cost half a billion dollars and be ready for launch in 2007, but as you will see in a minute, neither of those things happened. However, considering the spacecraft's extremely complicated and unique design, these forecasts proved to be overly optimistic. But why is the JWST so important? Well, to begin with, the telescope's construction cost about $10 billion, roughly doubling the original budget. And according to NASA, more than 300 people from all around the world contributed to making the concept a reality. The web is the most sophisticated and expensive telescope ever constructed. However, NASA wants to make clear that the Webb is not just a bigger and more effective telescope than Hubble and other existing ones. While it is essentially both of these things, with more than two and a half times the diameter and a hundred times the sensitivity, the JWST is fundamentally a different kind of equipment. Compared to its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, this new observatory in space features an entirely new instrument. The only similarity between the two telescopes is that they both employ curved mirrors to gather light from the cosmos. Even just assembling the telescope's mirrors was a difficult task. The 18-piece hexagonal mirror intercepts light as it travels through empty space and redirects it onto Webb's secondary mirror. Webb's main mirror is 6.5 meters across and is made up of gold-coated hexagonal pieces that are mosaic-like joined. Due to this size advantage, Webb has 6.25 times the surface area to collect light. The wavelength range covered by most optical telescopes ranges from around 380 to 740 nanometers in M, and is about the same as that seen by our own eyes. However, according to NASA's JWST website, the JWST will primarily be an infrared telescope tuned for wavelengths between 600 and 28,000 in M it will be able to detect radiation from incredibly distant objects dating back to the early days of the cosmos since the light it will catch is infrared, which is effectively heat. This massive, extremely delicate device had to be as light and durable as possible to survive the shocks and g-forces of a rocket launch. In contrast to its predecessor, Webb is more difficult for an astronaut repair crew to access in the event of a malfunction. Because everything must function flawlessly the first time, it took NASA the better part of two decades to prepare Webb for launch. So far, so good. It was deployed on Christmas Day 2021 and so far, everything has gone according to plan. The launch was extremely accurate in that the telescope will have additional operating fuel left over to work beyond its anticipated 10-year lifespan. And President Joe Biden presented the first full-color images from JWST on July 11. 
The image dubbed Webb's first deep field is the deepest and sharpest infrared picture of the distant cosmos to date and displays the SMAX 0723 galaxy cluster, which is roughly 4.6 billion light years from Earth. Astronomers were able to see more than 13 billion years into the early galaxy thanks to the distortion of space-time caused by the mass of those nearby galaxies. Even with the help of the heavens, other existing telescopes could never see so far. Some of these far-off galaxies and stellar clusters have never been seen before. Although the first pictures offer the most in-depth look at the universe yet, astronomer Klaus Pontepiden of the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore noted that this is not a record that will hold for very long. Scientists will shortly surpass that mark and dig much beyond. The picture represents a slice of the sky. Take a moment to visualize, holding a sand grain at arm's length from Earth's surface. That's how much of the sky is visible in the picture and is filled with galaxies. At least two galaxies in this picture have previously been identified by astronomers as potential contenders for the oldest galaxy ever seen. The Carnia Nebula, WASP-96b, the Southern Ring Nebula, and Stephens Quintant were among Webb's other key objectives for the initial image released. The most thorough analysis of an exoplanet spectrum to date is Webb's investigation of the massive gas planet WASP-96b. Although it isn't a direct picture, the newly released data provides a wealth of information on an exoplanet that was just found in 2014. The planet is nearly half the mass of Jupiter, circles its star every 3.4 days, and is located around 1150 light years from Earth. Previously, astronomers believed that there were no clouds in the sky, but new JWST data tells us a different story. The bumps and wiggles depict how much light at different wavelengths is taken in by the atmosphere, showing water vapor, haze, and unexpected clouds. Webb will eventually collect pictures of known exoplanets while simultaneously hunting for undiscovered planets. Then, we would go to a region that some have referred to as a foamy nebula. 2,000 light years from Earth, the Southern Ring Nebula, popularly known as the Eight Burst, was photographed by JWST's near infrared camera. NIRCAM, and mid-infrared instrument MIRI. The nebula seems to be an elongated swimming pool in earlier Hubble photos with a hazy orange deck and a dazzling, diamond-shaped white dwarf star in the center. JWST greatly widens the field of view, revealing more structures and tendrils in the gas than were seen with earlier telescopes. For millions of years, the dying star in the image's center has been spewing gas and dust in all directions. The next was Stephens Quintant, a collection of galaxies located around 290 million light years away in the Pegasus constellation. One of the galaxies in the group is moving through the center of the cluster as the other four galaxies partake in a unique gravitational dance. The picture is critical for understanding galaxy interactions. The web has allowed researchers to more clearly understand how interacting galaxies affect star formation. The picture spans an area of the sky that is roughly one-fifth the diameter of the moon as seen from Earth. Two galaxies are plainly on the verge of merging, and there is proof of a supermassive black hole in the top galaxy. The new JWST image that was released was equally remarkable. It shows the cosmic cliffs of the 7600 light-year distance Carnia Nebula, which contains stars that are considerably bigger than the Sun. The cosmic cliffs of Carnia have been extensively examined by scientists, but the new picture shows them in amazing depth. Webb's capacity to look through cosmic dust has uncovered previously hidden star birth regions inside the nebula that might offer fresh information on how stars are formed. The initial phases of star formation are more difficult to observe, but Webb's sensitivity can record them. Some of these newborn stars release protostellar jets, which are plainly seen in this image, into space. In the pitch black, dusty portions of the cloud, the youngest sources are evident as the red dots. Additionally, JWST recently focused its enormous, infrared-seeking eye on the cartwheel and its two partners. Several thousand light-years away, galaxies hover in the background. The cartwheel is a curious beast situated around 400 million light-years from us in the constellation of Sculptor. It's almost the same size as our Milky Way, stretching over 100,000 light-years wide. You've probably heard of spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies, and irregular galaxies. 
but there's a subclass known as odd galaxies. Galaxies with an overall form but a distinctive shape. The cartwheel in this example is formed like, well, a cartwheel. The final image created by merging MIRCAM and MIRI data provides astronomers with a sharper view of the history and present of the cartwheel by illuminating a galaxy in transition that is still very much in the throes of its previous encounter. The cartwheel's strange shape is likely to be the result of a crash with a smaller galaxy tens of millions of years ago. It would be a huge understatement to say that the images were worth the wait, and these new, sharper images will permanently change how we view the universe. What do you think of this incredible telescope? And what are you hoping that the telescope will look at? For us, it would have to be TRAPPIST-1. What about you? Let us know what you think in the comment section down below.